Hi everyone. Welcome to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. I'm Raven and this is Rowley. We're now living in full time in our 6x12 cargo trailer, converted cargo trailer. I'm still working on it while living in it. Rowley watches me work and encourages me to play. For the past five years we've lived in an RV full time, a class A and then a fifth wheel and now a cargo trailer. Last week I talked about me, a soon to be 79 year old woman, for the first time ever repairing my uh, car and even knowing what I was looking at under the hood, you know. This week I will talk about independence, land and homesteading. If you're curious, please join me on this journey and continue to watch. Before I start this video, I want to thank all of the people who gave me suggestions about what to do about my car in the comment section. Sunday I'll have the oil pressure, that's two days from now. Sunday I will have the oil pressure switch changed by a local guy who works in a garage for $20. Cost of the sender unit was $47, so $67 total. <laughs> Still a lot less than what the garage wanted for the computer job alone of just $1,000, you know. So the computer and the switch came to a little over $300, which is not bad, okay. I'm hoping that the oil pressure switch solves the problem, okay. So, Independence Day was Monday, as you know. A few people I know thought they were going to be a huge uprising that the shit would hit the fan and that everyone would come out and do the thing, whatever it was, that would return us to where we were before. Actually, that already started with the recent Supreme Court attack on women, but we won't go there, okay? It was thought that the cover of fireworks would start the show, you know. I'm glad I'm still here doing the same thing without having to fight for my life and water and food out in the desert, you know what I mean? But I do have to say that I did enjoy the fireworks show. It is 7.45 p.m. outside of town. And this is the town. And the sun going down. This is 8.05 p.m. July 4th, and it's a sunset. I think I need a zoom lens on my phone camera. I'm miles away from the town and high above it. As for independence, usually people set goals on New Year's Day, but for me this marks my independence. I spent this past week really looking at land. I mean, I've, I'm one of those people who have been looking at land for at least 50 years. I've been looking at different pieces of land, different parts of the country, different, you know, wanted to always own my own land. 
So this last week I spent really looking at land. I'm looking for a minimum of one acre in Nevada, Arizona, or New Mexico. At least I've gotten it down to that, <laughs> to those three states, you know. My goal is to become independent by the time I'm 80, which is next year. I want my own acreage to do homesteading. I've spent quite a bit of time dreaming about yurts. I actually built a yurt about 10 years ago in my backyard. It was 20 feet. You know, uh, I've been dreaming about earth berms and swales. I've been dreaming about pit toilets and outhouses. And planning water catchment. And other stuff. All kinds of stuff, you know. I haven't decided yet if I want to get goats again, or if I want to do chickens, which I don't know anything about, or what, you know. But, you know, that's in the future. So, how am I going to accomplish this when I haven't got big bucks or pretty close to any bucks? I'm looking for Ben Franklin deals, $100 down, $100 a month, or thereabouts, you know. It could be 150 a month. It could be $200 down, you know, that kind of thing. But no more than 36 months because I want to pay this off within a year, okay? There are hundreds, and I do mean hundreds of deals like this. My problem with most of them that I've investigated so far is that the owners of the land, uh, the sellers, want me to build sticks and bricks house with full septic and well. Well, uh, out in the desert, wells can run anywhere from $25,000 and up. In some places, there is a six month waiting list to get your well dug at $25,000. You know, it's got to be the only rig in town, you know. The water table in most places I've looked at is more than 500 feet. Holbrook, Arizona, which is where I've been looking this week, is 1,000 feet. I mean, to, to dig a well. You know, I can do water catchment, you know, catch the rain, get some water hauled in. It's not going to, it would be a long time before I used up $25,000 worth of water, you know. Septics run 3000 and up, and that's for a small septic uh, for a one-bedroom house because they, they judge the size of a septic system by how many bedrooms are in a house, you know. So one or two bedrooms, you know, by the time you finish digging the hole and getting the, the plastic, you know, container to hold it and making the leach field and all of that kind of stuff, it'll run easily three grand, you know. <laughs> and let us forget about how much a sticks and bricks building would cost to build out in the middle of the desert where they have to haul everything out there, you know. So that ain't happening, okay. I know that I could buy an acre of land for under $2,000. I know this, you know, that I could build a 20-foot yurt for under $2,000. And that's because the price has gone up. When I built my last yurt 10 years ago, it was 700 bucks, and that included the dome on the top. And the dome was 300 bucks. Even with today's wood prices, you know, I could build for under two grand. I know that I would have to, uh, I could have a pit toilet or an outhouse built for less than 500. I could know that I could build a water catchment system for less than $1,500, including the price of wood, you know. I, I could add to and build a frame for my solar for less than $1,000. All told, all told, land included, you know, we're talking under 5,000 grand, dollars, five grand, as opposed to $25,000 to dig a well. With a swale and berm to catch the monsoon rains, I could create a food forest. Now that's going to cost some money to get a digger out there and that kind of stuff because I'm not going to be digging trenches myself. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to do that. So my goal for the next year, since my 79th birthday is sometime this month, will be to start on that goal. 
actually have already started on that goal. I want to win to win. I want to own and live on the land full time by the time I'm 80. That's next year, next July. I want to travel. Meanwhile, while I'm looking for this land, I want to travel to various pieces of land to see what they look like. I don't just want to buy a piece of property like an investment property online, you know, and don't know what the dirt looks like, you know, or where the water runs off, or if there's any flat places to build or what, you know, I need to go and look at them. So I decided that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around and look at land before I buy it and camp on BLM land nearby and then go for the next one and then go for the one that I like the best, buy the one that I like the best, okay? Meanwhile, come September, if I haven't found anything, if I'm still wandering around, I'm going to go live on the LTVA BLM land in Quartzsite, Arizona for the winter and save some money. LTVA stands for Long Term Visitor Area uh, and it is the state of, of Arizona and California, although it's cheaper in Arizona, is $180 for seven months. You could live for seven months for $180. They provide free water, they have pit toilets for your sewer, and a dumpster for garbage. Can't beat that with a wooden stick, you know? Not at all, and even as expensive as wood is. So that's my goal for independence this, this coming year. Tell me, are you on track for your goals? The Rowley Report. Rowley's previous owner got him from a shelter and had to rehome him because he didn't get along with her first dog. She got him from the shelter because she thought her dog needed a companion. They got into blood fights. He, Rowley, urinated all over her RV. He was marking, of course. He didn't like that other dog. She said that he was, she was amazed to see him playing with a ball in one of the videos that I made showing him playing with balls. She said he never played with toys for the year he lived with her. I find that amazing because he always wants to play. He's always trying to get me to, to take the ball and throw it or something, do something with him, you know. He is totally a one person, one dog in the house dog. And he's a very good and loving dog. And I'm petting him. Okay, you got to see him. Here he is. Here's my sweetie pie. That's my sweetie pie, right? So thanks for watching and thanks for your support. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of you and yours and blessed be. Thank you.